This is a 2023 Cadillac CT4. Cadillac's compact sedan entry or the smaller of two gasoline power sedans they build. Quick side note, the only other sedan they build at all right now is the hand-built EV, very expensive, <laughs> Cadillac Celestic. The CT4 first arrived in the 2020 model year and not that much has changed to the core machine since. Little updates like new paints and different gadgets, stuff like that. Of course, the exception to that is the 2022 Cadillac CT4 V Blackwing. <laughs> that is different and that is very, very good. More specifically, this is a Cadillac CT4 premium luxury with all wheel drive painted in midnight steel metallic, which is an optional $625 color and one of three new colors offered for the 2023 model year. The other two are radiant red tint coat and argent silver metallic. The premium luxury trim is the middle of three, actually. It is above the luxury, but beneath the sport. However, this particular CT4 has the $2,500 optional 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder instead of the base two liter turbocharged four cylinder. So in a way, this is kind of the top trim you can get because it's only premium luxury or a V that gets the larger four cylinder engine. My name is Robin Warner, by the way, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I never knew steel looked like this at midnight. I review all kinds of cars from a $25,000 Ford Maverick to a $425,000 Rolls-Royce Cullinan. I'll happily jump into Honda Accords, BMW M3s, and Porsche 911 GT3s. And I have fun every time. Please subscribe and join me. The base price for a rear-wheel drive Cadillac CT4 luxury is $35,790. The all-wheel drive premium luxury starts at $42,690, and my test car had the optional paint, the engine, and the Super Cruise 2 package, which I will talk about more later, and costs $53,530. Okay, with that, now is a good time to pull over and show you around and inside this car in a bit more detail. Replacing the Cadillac ATS for the 2020 model year, the CT4 has not seen that many changes to the core model since. Minor updates 21, 22, and now 23 as well. But that means that we still get the same strong core vehicle here. Let's take a closer look. Looking at the front of the car, you get this nice pattern in the pentacron grille that sort of matches the cadillac crest itself which is now quite large but that all works for me styling wise you do have this nice long hood for the longitudinally mounted four cylinder engine underneath it you also have what is becoming a trademark these vertical headlamps you see right here and they are of course led this is also something you'll see on the cadillac gtp imsa race car so that's a fun little tie-in between its core models and its racing. Generally speaking, I think it's a clean look. I like the subtle bulge built into the hood here. I like the black mixed in with the polished metal look of the grill, and then the black lower grill, and this very black and quite small lower spoiler as well. But more importantly, not only what's under the hood, but how what's under the hood is positioned. 2.7 liter four cylinder engine, turbocharged of course. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but longitudinally mounted. Not only is it longitudinally mounted, it is tucked way back. The very front of the engine is right here, which is only about an inch or so ahead of the center point of the front axle. So this is virtually a front mid mounted engine. That helps for weight distribution, gives you a lighter front end, and that helps steering response. And since we have it up here, you can see we've got a nice big air box here, and we do have some strut mounts right here. From the strut towers, back towards the firewall on both sides. So on the driver's side, and even clearer on the passenger side. The turbo is also on the passenger side right down here, and I'm definitely looking forward to using it a bit more. Looking at the car in profile, it's a nice, low-slung, stately-looking compact sedan. 
I'll go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen right now so you can check that out. You can see it's right around the same size as an Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class, etc., etc. That means it is smaller than an Acura TLX, just to give a bit of context. I do like some of the details. For example, I think this polished metal window trim looks nice and complements these chrome fronts of the door handles on both the front and the back there. Looks good with this new metallic paint as well. And finally, you do get a touch of polished metal in the detail here in the side view mirror cover, which is a nice touch. Aside from the crest here, that's about it. You don't have a lot of extreme things going down here in the rocker panels or anything like that. It's just a clean, simple looking sedan. And I think that's a good way to go. 18 inch wheels on the CT4 Premium Luxury Cadillac. Luxury trims come standard with 17 inch wheels and you can get optional 19 wheels on the Premium Luxury version if you want. I think 18 inch wheels work just fine here. In fact, I wouldn't wanna do anything less than 40% sidewall thickness here, but I do wish that the overall wheel were a tiny bit bigger and filled this wheel well just a touch more. By the way, this is a square setup. You have 235 millimeter wide tires on both the front and back. Looking at the car from the back, we have this nice cool sculpted in rear spoiler into the trunk, which is a nice touch. And, you know, decent amount of angles and things going on. This rear spoiler also extends past the back of the car, but then it again kind of pops out and comes to a point in the center here. We do have dual exhaust tips and we do have this fake nonsense around it right here, but the tips are real and right there. So it's not too bad. I will allow it. Generally, I think this is nice styling. Again, I like this polished metal look in the lettering here to let you know CT4 all wheel drive. But there is one thing, 500T, what does that mean? That is supposed to indicate the amount of torque that this engine has in Newton meters. Problem is it's not quite true for this particular car. It makes 475 Newton meters or 350 pound feet of torque. So this is a tiny touch of an exaggeration on this car, but that certainly doesn't mean it's slow. Anyway, since we're back here, why don't I show you how much space we have in the trunk? And the answer is not that much. <laughs> 11 cubic feet of trunk space. Now the floor is a lot lower than the loading entry right here. It goes down a good eight inches here. We do have hooks to help out, to help keep things in place if you want. And underneath that is a bit of additional space. And we talked about weight distribution a little bit, right? Well, another thing to help take weight off the front is that the battery is back here. And if you do need more than 11 cubic feet of space, that is easy to do. And just like that, we have more than 11 cubic feet of space and room for two. All right, let's check out that back seat. The government calls this a compact car. And frankly, I think the government is right. Even without getting in, you can see we don't have a ton of space back here. It is 90 cubic feet in total interior space. And the front passengers get the lion's share of that. I am 5 foot 11 inches or 181 centimeters tall and you can see that I have a couple inches of knee room and I have about negative half an inch of headroom. My head is scraping against the roof. On the plus side, you do have a charge port here if you need and if you don't have three passengers back here, oh yeah, you do get an armrest with cup holders. How about that? Nice stitching on the interior here. Nice surfaces, soft touch, all of that. The usual controls right here on the door panel. The lock unlocks a little higher and you do have two position driver seat memory and that is a premium luxury trait right there. Not available on the luxury, at least not standard. Down low you do have a trunk release button here and you do have a nice metal kick plate beneath all that. The seats have the usual controls, but you do have a nice four-way lumbar adjust right there. There are a few controls to the left of the steering wheel, including your electric parking brake and adjustments to the head-up display. You do also have tilt and telescope steering adjustment. It is manually done right there. You do have a lot of controls on the steering wheel itself, and of course some paddle shifters here and here. This right here, this is part of Super Cruise. Yes, we have the Super Cruise 2 package 
And that means not only do we get Super Cruise, but we get a lot of other stuff, including head up display, which you can see right here, and actually a whole bunch of other things. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the list on the screen right now so you can check that out. It's a $7,700 package, but it does also come with a lot. That is a fully digital 12 inch instrument cluster right there. And right next to that is an eight inch center console touchscreen. Now that screen is standard with the Cadillac CT4 and that includes wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Also standard is a wireless smartphone charging pad right there. Also standard, a dual zone climate control system, but not standard is heated and ventilated seats up front along with a heated steering wheel over here. Those things are part of the climate package, which is part of the Super Crew 2 package, which I put up on the screen. Beneath that, you have a fairly standard looking Prindle right there. Here's some controls for the system up here. A couple of cup holders, more controls, and more storage down here. And that does include USB ports and a smart card reader and another 12 volt port right there. Looking up, actually not that much. Lights, some built-in garage door openers, and no moonroof. This is a nice and simple fixed roof car. Okay, push button start is right here. There is the instrument cluster all lit up and you can adjust the different things you're looking at. With this dial right here, I can move things up and down like that. Or with these switches right here, I can move over from here. And you can see that I have lots of different options of what I can look at. Oil temperature is an important one. And here's the center console touchscreen lit up. Pretty typical things here and nice movement to just be able to scroll back and forth and touch things as you wish. And since we're looking at this screen, we might as well look at drive modes, right? Drive modes are adjusted right down here. You have tour, sport, snow and ice, and my mode. Tour mode, sport mode, snow and ice, and my mode. That gives you a sense of what's adjusted. You do not have adjustable shock absorbers, but it's still nice to be able to play with things that are adjustable. One other little thing, for most of the drive modes, the instrument cluster gives you this screen right here. But if you go to sport mode, you get this screen instead. Nice little difference. Anyway, we're gonna spend most of the time in touring mode, but I think we might dabble with sport mode a little bit. Time to get back to the drive. All right, let's dig into that powertrain. The base engine in the CT4 is a turbocharged two liter engine that makes 237 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. Not bad, also not impressive, competitive. But this being the optional 2.7 liter, also turbocharged, it makes 310 horsepower and does so at 5,500 RPM and 350 pound feet of torque and it makes that amount of torque between 1,500 and 4,000 RPM. So a nice 2,500 RPM range for that. Also, this turbo is a little bit different than the two liters. It is a dual valet turbo. And I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I think it's close enough. Basically what that means is there's two separate intakes for the compressor side of the turbocharger. And as I understand it, having the two different chambers helps even out the pulses sent to the compressor, which in turn helps it spin up faster and give you less turbo lag, more response. And based on my experience with this car, the engine does respond well. If you think this engine sounds a lot like the 2.7 liter found in the CT4V, well, it basically is the same engine found in the CT4V. However, it is retuned slightly and does make less horsepower and torque. The V gets 325 horsepower, 15 more, and 380 pound-feet of torque, 30 more pound-feet. However, the peak torque doesn't come until 2,000 RPM, so you have to wait an additional 500 RPM to get there. By the way, the CT4V Blackwing does a whole lot better because it has a 3.6 liter V6 that pumps out 472 horsepower and 445 pound-feet of torque. Back to our 2.7 liter, that is attached to a 10-speed automatic transmission, which gives a nice and wide ratio range and does a really good job to deliver fast shifts. And that is two speeds more than the base two liter provides. You get an eight-speed automatic transmission with that. 
This is an all-wheel drive CT4. The base drivetrain is rear-wheel drive. Going all-wheel drive is available on all the trims for an extra two grand. Now, the 2.7 liter turbocharged engine is a good engine. I'm in the touring mode, yet if I stomp the gas, there's not much of a delay and then there is good, good pull. But if I go to sport mode, that delay is reduced, it is sharper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is good stout power from this 2.7 liter. Good, fast, strong shifts. Nice engine sound as well. It is ultimately not 100% authentic, but it sounds better. I'll admit it. I admit it. I like the sound, even though it's not 100% authentic. Ugh, it feels a little dirty coming out of my mouth to say it, but hey, there it is. And it's not just good power. The 10-speed automatic transmission helps to deliver pretty darn decent fuel economy. You get 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 on the highway, 24 combined. If you do stick with the rear-wheel drive CT4, those numbers do improve a little bit. And if you stick with the base two-liter engine, the numbers improve further. I'll go ahead and put those up on the screen for you to check out. While fuel economy is very important, it's not nearly as much fun as accelerating, especially when you have more than 300 horsepower to play with in a compact sports stand. Yes, I tested it. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I do have the CT4 in sport mode and it's all wheel drive, so I'm not worried about traction. Let's see how it goes. Okay, coming to a complete stop. Bit of brake torque. 2,500 RPM, off we go. Jump. <laughs> yes, good pull, good sound. Nice. All right, that is strong pull from this 2.7 liter four cylinder engine, 310 horsepower. Yeah, does a lot of good work as I expected. Absolutely no problems with traction being all wheel drive. The launch was not the most aggressive, not quite as aggressive as I thought it might be, but pretty darn strong. And then we were off and out right away. One quick note, we were getting shifts especially the one two shift was about 5,500 RPM. So a little bit shy of red line. Anyway, overall, great acceleration. I said the words, compact sport sedan. Something like that is not about straight line performance. There's a good chance you want to take a corner or two as well. This is definitely worthy of a handling test. Let me show you that right now. Time for a handling test. I do have the car in sport mode still but now I also have both the stability and traction control off. So yeah, let's see how this base CT4 chassis handles. <laughs> yep, stout pull from that Turbo 4, no doubts. Yeah, good control, not much movement from the body. Good body control for sure. A bit of understeer, but very easy to control. Yes, still good control from the body, good responsive front end. Nice that we have this thing called performance shift being active that keeps us in lower gear, higher revs. This is a good responsive chassis that is easy to feel critically. This is a good feeling chassis. And I had a really strong feeling about that if I'm honest because this is the same basic platform as the CT4 Blackwing. And that was phenomenal to drive. All the fundamentals of that car exist here. So yeah, even though it's still winter and I'm still very much in the north, that was a lot of fun. Really good handling car. Yeah, really good fun. Alas, most of your time will not be spent driving around fun curvy roads. What is this car like just to be on the road for the more day-to-day -day stuff? And the answer is quite good. This is very comfortable. It's nice and quiet inside. You have a lot of adjustments in the seats. You have good amounts of technology. For example, I love the fact that a wireless smartphone charger is standard on the CT4. I think that's a really good touch as well as wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Those kinds of features to help you stay connected pretty darn seamlessly are really nice. Moreover, that really good structure that helps with handling is also tuned really well to provide a completely comfortable ride. 
Yes, it might be stiffer than some sedans out there, but for me, it's still plenty compliant over bumps and heaves in the road and that kind of thing. And that's true on roads like this or on the interstate. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for a stint on the interstate. See how the CT4 feels just cruising on the highway. Now, you can adjust between adaptive cruise control and regular cruise control in the CT4, which is a trait I really like, and normally I would just use regular cruise control, but I also have the $7,700 Super Cruise 2 package, which means, of course, I have Super Cruise, so also, of course, we have to test that out. We do have a nice long list of driving aids. I'll go ahead and put those on the screen right now so you can check that out. Okay, adaptive cruise control is set to go at 75 miles an hour, keeping up with traffic. And now I'm gonna turn on Super Cruise and Super Cruise is also set. So here go my hands. All right, now this is Super Cruise 2, which means that I do have lane change on demand and automatic lane change. So if the car, and there it goes right as I say it. So the car, if it sees a gap and wants to get closer to its set cruise control speed, it'll change lanes on its own. Pretty darn impressive that we've gotten to that level of the Super Cruise. I like that quite a bit. And of course, because this is Super Cruise, there are no complaints that my hand aren't on the wheel. That is all part of it. Now, Super Cruise does rely on two important things. You have to be on a road that the Super Cruise system knows, and Cadillac claims that's currently over 200,000 miles worth of roads, and I'm pretty sure that includes just about all the interstate. Also, you need to be looking at the road. If you're not looking at the road and you're not paying attention, the system shuts off. There's a sensor beneath the steering wheel that looks at you to make sure that you're looking at the road. That sensor is right there. And I also have it set to driver assistance, so you can see right there that the car is telling me what it sees with that screen right to the right of the speedometer, which I really appreciate. Anyway, I really like Super Cruise. If you're gonna have driver assistance, I feel like you should be able to have sustained hands off the wheel to really make it worth something. Otherwise, I'd rather just have complete control myself and do it all myself. And after time, even with Super Cruise, I'd rather have full control and just do it all myself. But for the occasional break, I suppose, especially from interstate driving, I really appreciate it. Also, I wanted to add that this is a nice and quiet cabin, really nice wind noise isolation and road noise isolation, plenty comfortable in here. I also have the heated and ventilated seats. The seats themselves have a lot of lumbar adjustments, so it's really easy to get comfortable. Lots of other adjustments otherwise. All the switch gear is easy to reach and easy to use, and the digital screens, both the instrument cluster and the center console touchscreen, work well as well. So this is a great, great cruising car on the interstate. Quite like it. This is a great, great car. Just like the CT5, it's bigger brother. It rides really well, it handles really well. The core chassis is competent enough that it can handle having big performance when you go black wing. And yet there are still plenty of creature comforts in here to give an authentically premium experience. I think the Cadillac CT4 and CT5 are class leading when it comes to cabin isolation, both road and wind noise. And the price, I'm impressed at how competitive this car is in terms of price. Now, this is a little bit smaller on the inside than some of the other compact sports sedans out there, but for me, it's still enough room. And I think the second row seats are used rarely enough that that would largely go unnoticed. Same for the trunk space. It's not the largest, but it's fine. And again, if no one's in the back seat, you can fold them down anyway. Now, for me personally, I think the styling and the space and the not huge difference in size would actually make me lean towards the CT5 as a first choice, but the CT4 is less expensive and really, really strong on a lot of levels. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Doing so really does help me out a lot. Also, if you're interested in something like the Cadillac CT4, you should also definitely check out the Genesis G70. It also has a lot of strengths and a really attractive price point when you compare it to things like BMW and Mercedes. I'll have a link to my review of that car in the description and I hope it's also popping up right there. And from there, I've reviewed a whole bunch of stuff by now. Something's gonna come up on the screen next to me. 
Hopefully it's something you're interested. And if you do end up watching it, I definitely hope you like it. Okay, goodbye for now.